I spoke to Kurt Volker. He's the former U.S. ambassador to NATO, and he's a senior fellow at the Center for Transatlantic Relations with Johns Hopkins University. I asked him about Brexit and how it would affect NATO. For NATO, it doesn't change much at all. NATO's always been individual states that are member states. They make decision, each one having to agree, reaching a consensus together. That formula doesn't change whether a country is in NATO, or in the EU, or not in the EU. And think about it, you know, the United States, Canada, Turkey, Norway, all members of NATO, not members of the EU. I think with the UK being in or out, that's really not going to change very much. It's interesting you say that because uh, there was a March headline in the Telegraph. Brexit could threaten the NATO alliance, says top U.S. general. Lieutenant General Frederick Ben Hodges raises concerns European Union could unravel in the event of Brexit, uh, weakening efforts to resist Russian expansionism. And though I, I, I interviewed a guest right after the Brexit vote, and they said, oh, in Moscow, they're celebrating this. But you don't see it as, as that dire. Well, there are, diff there are different aspects to this. Even with the quote that you just gave from Ben Hodges, he said it could unravel the EU. And that's different than NATO. Do you think it's likely? Uh, I don't think it's likely, uh, but you are going to see a boost. Some of these uh, movements in France, for instance, the National Front, Allianz für Deutschland in Germany, there will be others that will raise the argument, well, we should have a referendum too, and we should decide whether we want to be in the EU. And if you have some momentum behind that, it, it, it could fragment the EU. I just don't think it's very likely. I think the majorities in all of the European countries are going to want to stay. It's interesting you bring that up because, of course, the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party, uh, Donald Trump, and I don't want to get this wrong because he gets mad when people say things the wrong way. So I want to quote him directly. He says the allies are, quote, ripping off the United States and the NATO countries are not paying their fair share. It doesn't sound like he's very NATO friendly. If this election goes one way or the other, right. Right. what are your thoughts? Yeah. No, you hear that uh, when you visit Europe, and I was just uh, in Europe for a good part of June. Uh, you do hear people expressing concern about what Donald Trump has said about NATO and about renegotiating or about Europeans needing to pay more of uh, the costs or the U.S. pulling out. Uh, I'd say two things to that. One, we don't really know what Donald Trump would do if president. He's also said the opposite of that. So <laughs> we really don't know what he would do. Uh, secondly, any president, whether it's Trump or Clinton or whomever, is going to be constrained by reality. And the reality is that we depend upon NATO for our security, as uh, maybe not as much as NATO depends on us, but it's mutual. We benefit from having all of these allies as well. Every president, President Obama, has complained about European allies not paying enough. The trend line has actually begun to turn around. Uh, it has increased, say, in Latvia. Estonia is already paying 2 percent. Germany has had a modest defense budget increase. So is the U.K. So while it is still lower than we think it should be and what would be fair for American taxpayers, the trend line has begun to change a little bit, too. But what about the criticism it's just a tripwire? Uh, and I'm sure you've heard that. I is it enough? Well, I, th I think it's desirable to have a tripwire where we are showing resolve and capability, but we are not escalating the stakes so much where we're trying to go tit for tat with massive Russian forces on the other side of the border. It's just meant to be a signal of will and capability so that it deters any adventurism. And that's what should create some stability. What about those who say perhaps it's time for the United States, instead of a pivot to Asia, to pivot to Europe? As, as one uh, Western defense official said, it's like trying to leave the mafia. You know, it's like the Middle East. You've got Europe. You've got Asia. Where do you devote your attention? Obviously, NATO's uh, key. Well, I'd say it this way. The United States is a global actor. Um, we have interests and concerns and challenges in every part of the world, and we can't pick and choose. Uh, we have interests in Europe. We have allies in Europe. We have security challenges in Europe. We have allies and friends and interests in Asia. We have concerns about the Middle East. We have ISIS that wants to attack us. We have our own backyard, Latin America, where Venezuela is on the verge of coming apart. And we have allies in Colombia and Chile. So. We really do have a global network of relationships, and we can't pick and choose where we want to engage or where we don't. The rest of the world has the U.S. as one of its primary reference points, one of its primary focal points. And we can't take ourselves off the table because then that will just keep coming towards us.